What's up, DNA gang? Y'all know the name. How y'all doing today? today, man? Today, we got Young Donna Sasuke. She snuck in, and I got kicked out. Mm. Hey, we already did our story time on how my dad called us in the house back when we was, what, 16, 15? Something like that. It was. Right, it was something like that. She don't ever remember nothing. But hey, that link will be in the description. So hey, if you ready, I'm ready. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Cue the intro. Let me draw the boat, bitch. You know I wreck the shit. Get it by the boat. Watch a nigga make it flip. All right, before we get into this, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you don't miss another video. Let's get right into it. As I'm fixing my dinner in the kitchen, I see my uncle. He was sitting by himself. See. Story I told about my aunt kicking me out my junior year yep, of high okay. school because one day she came up to my room and it was it was nasty, bro. It was it was disgusting, filthy. A mess. I then told you that I had an uncle that came in clutch because he took me in so I wouldn't have to get put on a plane back to Jamaica. That's what's up. Well, For real. the next year he he also kicked me out. Damn. Which which makes me wonder, was I the problem? Yes, you gotta start Common going. Denominator. I'll tell you the it's story, you. and then you can tell me. So, when I moved to my <clears throat> uncle's, I also moved 30 minutes drive away from school. Which meant... That's drive. There's, there's no more walking to school, bro. You feel me? That's dead. I now needed a ride. And at first, my uncle was taking me. Now... No cap. When you live close by the school, are you in like 10 minutes of walking distance, bro? Oh, anything goes when you got that little 30 minutes before your parents get home. This made me feel bad because my <laughs> uncle worked very hard and was already going a lot out of his way to accommodate me so short notice. To add him having to get up at 6.30 and take me to school, it was a lot. So you can imagine how relieved I felt when I found out that one of my new neighbors was this dude I knew from school. Let's call him... Br Roger. <laughs> Brian was also a senior. We had a mutual friend through one of my <coughs> basketball teammates. And most importantly, Brian had a car. Hey. Which meant he drove to school in the mornings. So one day I asked him if I could ride with him in the mornings. And he said, yeah. I said, bet. No biggie. I asked my uncle. He was... More than on board with it. In fact, he was going to give me twenty five dollars a week just to give Brian for gas money. It was a win. He was going to give me twenty five dollars a week just to give Brian for gas money. She win, win, win. We gonna get that five. So Brian starts taking me to school in the mornings, and at first everything's going well. But then one day on the way to school, Brian was like, "Yo, Don, we about to stop at Kev's house real quick." Link up with some of the boys. Kev was also someone I knew. So oh, I was yeah. like, that, yeah, that, that's cool. Okay. I didn't ask too many questions. So we take a detour Never from did. the usual route and end up at Kev's house. We park and then Brian turns off the car and starts to get out. So I'm like, yo, we not going to school? Brian's like, oh yeah, we about to go. I'm going to just get some from Kev real quick. I'll be right back. So I'm in the car chilling. About 10 minutes go by. And then Brian comes back out looking very relaxed. For <laughs> real! He gets in the car, and I noticed that he now smelled very... Danky. Organic. Herbal, some would say. So I was like, okay, I get it. We continue on to school, and we get there like 10, 15 minutes late. Not a big deal. I mean, I didn't like being late, but everyone's Don't late once in a while. Well... Once in a while, turned into two to four times a week. Mm. I remember my uncle is paying this dude. Also, I wasn't into herbs like that at the time, so Me it was just starting to be an inconvenience. Step. I didn't start doing this really until really I turned 19, 20, like heavy, like 19, 20. The first time, you know, the first time I tried it, I was time. 18, but heavy, I was maybe. I was like, eh, I'd rather yeah. do this than ask my uncle again. Plus, I didn't want to snitch, so I was like, I'll figure it out. So my diehard fans would know <coughs> that when I started my senior year of high school, I wasn't with Taylor. Remember, we had broken up over the summer. Watch 
this video to get the we, reference. We, we, not, but we watched that. A few months into the school year, we got back together. Again, this video explains all of that. So one day, she's dropping me home from school because we now lived kinda in the same direction and we were dating again. She's dropping me home and I'm telling her about the whole morning detours thing and she gets it, you know? Cause she was uh, she was an Asian, know what I mean? Oh, I'm, I'm Jamaican. We no. both had strict parents, is oh, what okay, okay. I'm trying to say. We had to be good I was students. Like, what are you so talking about? She's like, I could pick you up in the mornings. So I'm like, yeah. You uh, you sure you want to do that? She's like, yeah, no problem. So I'm like, okay, okay, okay. All right, problem solved. So she starts picking me up in the morning, and it's going great. I he gonna start driving a pink car too. Shawty, sometimes she would stop at that. McDonald's I did. Fuck it, my lady, let me push her shit. I'ma push it. Pines Boulevard. Yeah, that one. She'd stop there, and I'd buy her some breakfast McGriddles. And life was. She liked the good. bacon one. For like two weeks. The McGriddles. Like the my one. uncle noticed that Taylor was taking me to school instead of Brian. You actually so different. Like, you don't never order Yo, sauces. Yes, she I do. Not one with the McGriddle. Yes, I do. I tell him, oh, Taylor lives close. She offered. Didn't think it was sausage good. and cheese, and, and you know like, that. Does Taylor's parents know? No, you're right. It's the biscuits. Like, yeah. yeah. Try again. It's the Maybe. same shit to me. Try again. Um, probably, probably not. Nah, nah, they don't. They don't know. He's like, well then, Chris, that sounds to me like this is, in fact, a big deal. That, that's how he talks to me when he's lecturing me. <laughs> he's uh, retired from the U.S. Navy, by the way. So I'm like, I mean, Taylor doesn't seem to mind at all, honestly. Plus, that, that 25 you give me, I use it to buy us breakfast in the mornings and put a little gas in her car. But my uncle wasn't trying to hear none of that because... If Taylor were to, let's say, get into an accident with me in a car or on the way to my house and her parents didn't know that she was making these Uber runs for the boy, it would be a problem. Yeah. And no cap, that's parents how my dad is. Wouldn't yep. have been okay with it. Her dad would not let so, her drive my Camaro I for shit. Again. And surprise, surprise, guess who's late for school? I had so to start paying for my I own gas because I would go pick him up all the time. Situation. Option one. Continue going with Brian, continue to rack up tardies for being late, and then deal with those consequences. I went to court for that <laughs> my freshman year. Tardies and absences. Brian Never did. wasn't working out and have him start taking me to school again and just deal with the perpetual sense of feeling like a burden because, like I said, my uncle was already doing a lot for me. Like, I haven't even said that. So there was that. Or... <laughs> Option three. What's that? Lie to my uncle, tell him that Brian was taking me to school, but have Taylor keep picking me up in the mornings. Guess which one I went with. Secrets never end well when you mm, don't lie. <laughs> secret secrets hurt people. <laughs> like for real, like don't lie. Cause it always blow up in your fucking face. Okay, bet. Bet. Look. Now, hey, if y'all are watching, subscribe. Pulling off this lie, my uncle lived in a gated community, mm -hmm. which meant unless you had a pass on your car to get in, anyone coming in had to go through security, and security would always call the house to verify that you were expecting a guest. So I fuck with that. I need that type of shit. When my girl came to pick me up, the security at the gate would call the house phone. The house phone was kept in the living room. So what I would do is in the mornings, around the time when my girl was gonna be pulling up, I would sit in the living room, phone in hand, finger on the trigger. As soon as the phone started- Ready to go. Answer it. That way, it would only ring for like, less than half of a second. On top of which, my aunt and uncle are fast asleep up in their room on the second floor. So there's no way they could have heard it. I did this every single morning. And as far as I could tell, it was working perfectly. I'd give the security the okay to let her in and I'd walk up. He could hardly got one of them uncles cause I got a mama like that. My mama like that. She liked to check the caller ID and the call log. She used to do that shit when I was a kid, bro. She used to go to my phone and check the call log and all that shit, bro. No cap. To a point where the house was out of view. And then me and my girl would drive off into the morning sun <clears throat> Occasionally stopping 
for bacon, egg, and cheese McGriddles. Because if you get the sausage, you are a psychopath. And life was what? good, man. I don't life like the good. egg. Exactly. Like I like the sausage and cheese. By, exactly. And I started to notice a tension in the house. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but something was off particularly around my uncle. Now, like I said, my uncle is a US veteran. He has a very stoic demeanor. He's not a mess around silly kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Also, he and his wife, my auntie, run a business together and they have two kids. So I wasn't sure if there was really tension I was feeling or if he was just having a stressful week. Maybe a couple more days go by and then I get my answer loud and clear. Late one evening, I came home from basketball practice. One of my teammates dropped me home. I walked through the door, tired, hungry, but happy to be home. I set my stuff down, yell out, good night to everybody. And I made my way to the kitchen to start fixing myself a plate for dinner. As I'm fixing my dinner in the mm -hmm. kitchen, I see my uncle. He was sitting by himself in the living room couch. Oh, His say, he know. shaved head reflecting the bright fluorescent lights of the 75 inch ultra wide flat screen TV mounted on the wall. I could see him clearly, upset. He yet upset. there was a darkness on that side of the house. Without looking at me, he says, good night, Chris. Hope you had a good day. I'm like, yeah, you had a good day. <laughs> and this shit banging uh, too, dog. This stuff done and stuff. He offers some short response, but I noticed that he didn't sound mad so i'm like oh okay we i'm getting away it. with this shit yeah so i'm getting close to finishing my meal and then he gets up and goes into the other living room i guess my aunt and uncle do very well for themselves so he goes into the other room and then i hear hey chris can i bother you to join me and auntie in the living room for a moment I thought she was going to sleep. For real. Right so what's nope. up, auntie? You said mm -hmm. so me up now? Like, oh, yeah. Uh, sure thing, Uncle Glenn. So I go in the room, mm -mm -mm. and I am greeted with just this Game of Thrones vibe, oh, shit. bro. Like, my uncle is sitting in like, this so big, been lying to me, boy? vintage yeah. grandfather chair with my sweet auntie standing a little bit to the side, a little bit behind the chair with one hand delicately perched on the back of the chair. I look at her on her she face. She got the strap in the other hand. I, <laughs> I look at my uncle. On his face, I saw fury. He was upset. He was quiet. Staring into my actual soul. Chris, how about you take a seat? See, when you just so I take a seat. Chris, you. has Brian been Let's taking you to school in the mornings? <laughs> and there it was. Instantly, my stomach sunk. I was caught. Didn't even make sense to try and lie. You don't phrase a question like that because For you real. don't know that For answer. real. No, you For do it to see if the person being asked a question is the gall to lie to your face. Facts. So I came clean. Um, no, 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 uncle. So how have you been getting to school, Chris? Um, my bitch. <laughs> uh, ta Taylor, Taylor been taking. And as soon as I said that, my uncle starts to cuss me out, bro. I'm talking the worst cuss out I've ever gotten in my life. Yeah, my anybody, no, my mom, my dad, coach, teacher, nobody has even come close to that. And this uncle was also born and raised in Jamaica. Mix that with the military service and the alphaness that comes to be a successful <laughs> self-made man. And also, he's about 6'3", 240, big dude. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. He destroyed me with words. I felt Didn't even have to touch so me. Small. Now go get my Worst belt. I've ever felt in my life uh, right? about anything to this day. And that's because everything he said was true. I was ungrateful. I was a liar. I was disrespecting yeah. him and my auntie by disobeying a direct order mm -hmm. right under their noses. And then so like he kids nowadays. the hammer. He told me that as soon as I finished the school year, I was to get all my things together and to get the you know what out of that house. Finally, you know, at least he let him the finish clip the school was year. empty. All the shots had been fired, and I just sat there. But I'm hurt. Died, mm. And in shock. And then he asks, What do you say to that? 
I'm sorry. What am I supposed I to say? I was trying to lie to you. <laughs> but Brian be smoking in the morning. I didn't want to get caught. And and we always late for school. And you and Auntie do so much for me. He rat it. Bruh. Like, I'm trying to do the right thing, man. But he gonna like, be on the street. Y'all gonna rat? Bruh. He gonna rat? Y'all the thing you just go no more. And then Taylor was like, she ain't care. So I just did it. I'm sorry. I mean to be a bad nephew. So then my oh. aunt was like, so why didn't you just tell us what was going on? Because I didn't want to snitch on Brian. Because he a cool dude. He just made bad <laughs> choices right now. Because he a cool dude. That I was truly remorseful. But more importantly, they could tell I was being honest. My uncle got up, stood me up, and then gave me a hug. And it was a real hug. I could tell that my lies had hurt him because he I'm thought telling you gonna catch up to you, bro. Character. But now he saw that my heart was in a good place. I was just stupid. I was stupid, not just because I did what I did, but because I didn't take into consideration that there was a house phone extension on my own oh, bitch. Table beside the bed, bro. <laughs> so every time the security called, he would hear the same half a second phone ring every morning at the same time. Also, <gasps> I could have probably put my girl's name on the guest list so they wouldn't have to call in the morning. Yeah, just plain old stupid. So I was with dumb me. criminal. My uncle started taking me to school in the mornings again. And life was good. Moral of the story. Don't Honesty lie. really is the best policy. It really is, or at guys. the very least, don't be stupid. It's, she wanna come and play us. It's so much harder to lie you and keep, keep up with the lie. Like, just tell the truth, y'all. It's For so real. much easier. Hey, we'll catch y'all next time. Peace out. We out. out of boat, watch a nigga make it flip. I, make it flip. I ain't a little boat, but I just want night the bitch.